I should probably start by apologising for my somewhat unkempt appearance, but uh, we're on passage and uh, been off on watch half the night, so uh, haven't managed to shave this morning. This little video is about sleep deprivation. Now, I'm a cruising yachtsman, always have been. I've done my share of racing, but always with fully crewed yachts. And to me, the people who really know about sleep deprivation and how to deal with it are those guys and girls who go off on these round the world races in flying machines. How they cope, I don't know, they're superhuman. And that's not what I'm gonna talk about because it's outside my experience. I have had some bad times with getting no sleep though. And I remember one time, years and years ago, my wife and I had a little 22 foot boat on the Hamble River on the south coast of England and we thought well we'll sail this to France that would be great why not why wouldn't you do that people do much greater things than that so off we went the boat was built in 1930 it leaked like a basket and uh, there were all sorts of side issues but we got to France all right 60 mile passage as I say and the time came for us to come home well when we set out for home the wind was blowing northerly just what we didn't want. It was an awfully long beat and it was blowing quite hard. It was only a tiny boat with a centreboard actually. And we set out in the morning full of hope, imagining that we might possibly get in before dark. Not a chance. And the thing was, I made a bad mistake because my wife Roz had not been sailing hardly at all when we made this passage. I'd done a lot of sailing and so I knew that I was all right for steering the boat to windward. We had got nothing to give away because the little boat was doing her best but she wasn't going very quick. And I just didn't feel that Roz could steer the boat well enough so I stuck on the helm myself all the time. This was a stupid mistake and I'll tell you what I should have done in a minute. But uh, I stayed on the helm steering the boat to windward like a dinghy sailor and night fell and I stayed there and it was getting cold and Roz behaved like a hero. She thought for herself, thought what am I going to do to keep this bloke alive out there? And she sent me up lovely hot water bottles which I stuffed down my jumper to keep me nice and warm. She was passing up the hot drinks. She was doing everything she could to keep me awake and, uh, and alert. But by the time we got to the Needles, which is the entrance to the Needle, uh, the entrance to the Solent where we lived, I was absolutely shattered. I didn't know what day it was anymore and as we came in the Needles Channel I saw a boat coming out towards me. It was a black boat and it had black sails and it had a light flashing at the top. I thought whatever's that. Now let me tell you in those days green navigation boys, starboard hand boys, they weren't green at all they were black and what I'd seen was a black boy and I'd read it in the dawn light. I could see it with my own eyes but I was hallucinating and I, I'd somehow made it into a yacht and that's what the sleep deprivation had done for me. I've been on the helm for nearly 24 hours and it was too much. We did get in in one piece and I never did that again. What I should have done was got my head down somewhere in the middle of the channel, given the helm to Roz and if I was worried about her steering to wind, which is anything but stupid, she could certainly have steered a compass course. I could have said just steer the boat on this compass course. I could have guessed what the compass course was for going to windward, it wouldn't have been far out and she could have done that. No problem. But I didn't because I wasn't thinking straight. I was thinking I was the man and I did not delegate. So that's the first thing. Don't tire yourself out. Find a way of delegating if you're the skipper. Just do it, you know, there's always a way because it's critical that you get your head down. How you do this is, is up to you, but you've got to have a nice snug place down below where you're going to go to sleep or at least get some rest. It's important to just get down below and get your head down, get out the wind, forget the waves, forget the problems of the boat. Just get down there, read your book, go to sleep if you can, but you'll be a little bit anxious very likely and maybe sleep will be hard to come by, but just read a book, just do something other than sit out there getting tired. So here are the two golden rules for avoiding sleep deprivation on a short one night passage. One, delegate. Make sure that your crew can steer the boat, they can look out and they can see what's coming. And if they're in any doubt about a ship, they're going to call you. If they think maybe you need to take a reef or maybe start the engine, they're going to call you. You know they will and they know they can. So there's no stress and you can rest easy when you're down below. The second thing is to pace yourself. Take it easy. Don't try and do too much and do go below 
when you've done what you have to do. Get some sleep and make sure your crew gets some sleep too. There's nothing wrong with you standing up here on your own while they're having a snooze, but call them out when you've had enough and make sure everybody gets some shut eye. That way you'll get through to the new day, you'll get into wherever it is you're going, you'll be tired, you'll probably go out for a fine lunch and then sleep it off in the afternoon. And why not? Sleep deprivation shouldn't be a big problem for cruising sailors.